undetected footprints, we are talking about 19-year-old Bryce Las Pisa. He disappeared without a trace while driving home late one night. Now, a decade later, they still don't know what happened to him. Bryce was, only, was an only child, raised in Springfield, Illinois, by his parents, Karen and Michael. His friends and family described him as intelligent and outgoing. He was a talented artist and spent a lot of his free time gaming. When Karen and Michael retired, they wanted to move to California. After Bryce graduated high school in 2012, the family moved to Laguna, Nigel, and Orange County. At this time, Bryce also started, also started attending Sierra College, roughly a seven-hour drive from his parents. Bryce's freshman year went smoothly. He studied graphic and industrial design, became good friends with his roommate, Sean Dixon, and started dating another student named Kim Sly. The summer of 2013 approached, they, those closest to him noticed that he was drinking heavily. Sean noticed that his roommate was drinking hard liquor daily, finishing as much as two-fifths in a weekend. Both Sean and Kim claimed Bryce was taken by Vancy, a prescription medication used to treat ADHD and binge eating, and binge eating disorder to help him stay awake longer in game. Bryce's odd behavior increased during the first two weeks of his second year at Sierra College. He was using Vivancy more frequently, and despite appearing happy in his relationship, he just broke up with Kim in a text message that said she'd be better off without him. Sean also received an odd text message from his roommate saying, I love you, bro. Seriously, you are the best person I've ever met. You saved my soul. The same day, Bryce gave his, Sean his Xbox and a pair of diamond rings he'd received from his mother. On August 28th, Sean called his friend's mother to express his concerns. He couldn't have known how much worse it would get. After Sean contacted her, Karen called Bryce to check in on him. When they spoke, he was at Kim's house fighting over the keys to his car. Kim had taken them away from him as she didn't think he should be driving based on his unusual behavior. Bryce claimed she was just upset because he broke up with her. Ultimately, Karen convinced Kim to give Bryce back his keys so he could go back to school and get some sleep, a decision that likely haunts her to this day. While his mother offered to fly to see him the following day, Bryce told her not to make a reservation until he had the chance to talk to her. Karen said, Bryce... I'm worried. Let me come up there tomorrow. Let me fly up there tomorrow. And he says, Mom, no. Don't make any airline reservations until I talk to you because I have a lot to talk to you about. She would never learn what her son had to tell her. After leaving Kim's on August 28th at 11.30 p.m., Bryce was supposed to head back to his apartment near school. His mom missed a call from him at 1 a.m., and phone records later showed that he was about an hour past the apartment. Around 11 a.m., Karen and Micah received a notification that Bryce used their insurance as roadside assistance at a gas station in Button Willow, roughly three hours from them, and assumed he was heading to the family's home. When several hours passed and Bryce never showed up, they called the owner of Castro Tire and Gas, and a man named Christian explained he delivered three gallons of gasoline to the teenager at 9 a.m. Since he'd met Bryce just a few miles away, Christian offered to return to the area they'd met to see if Bryce was still there. Oddly enough, he was still sitting in the car on the side of the road, four hours after receiving the gas. When Christian put him in touch with his parents, he offered no explanation but agreed to get back on the road and drive straight to their house. This is when things got truly weird. When 3 a.m. rolled around and Bryce still hadn't returned home, Karen and Michael filed a missing persons report with the Orange County Sheriff's Department. The police were able to track his cell phone quickly and locate Bryce just a few miles from where Christian had brought him gasoline. They reported that the teen didn't seem intoxicated and that they didn't find any drugs or alcohol when they searched his car. While with the police, Bryce spoke to his parents, and Karen told him to come home. She then got in touch with Christian, who drove to their son's new location to make sure he got on the highway. At 2 a.m., Bryce called his parents, saying he was too tired to keep driving, and planned to pull over to take a nap. It was the last time she heard from him. Later that morning, police notified Karen and Michael that they discovered Bryce's car at the bottom of a 25-foot embankment 
laying on its side near Cassica Lake. Bryce wasn't in the vehicle, but the rear windshield had been broken from the inside. So police assumed that's how he got out of the vehicle. Based on the tire tracks, it's thought the team crashed intentionally. Bloodhounds tracked Bryce's ascent to a nearby truck stop. Authorities believe he walked there from the crash site, leaving his wallet, phone, and laptop behind. Surveillance photos revealed that he never pulled over to sleep like he told his mother. Instead, after their 2 a.m. phone conversation, he drove towards the lake. More than two hours later, his vehicle was seen on surveillance down the same road. Authorities performed an extensive search for the missing team. Even using cadaver dogs and divers to dredge the lake would end up empty-handed. Since then, dozens of theories have been made about what happened to Bryce, with many believing he was suffering from a mental health crisis. Karen and Michael still hold out hope that someday they'll learn the truth about what happened to their son and have an active Facebook page where they share updates and help get Bryce's story out there. Up next, from KCRA 3 News, is a video of them talking to Bryce's roommate. Let's take a look. Today, investigators are trying to figure out if there's any connection between a burning body found near a Southern California lake and the disappearance of a student who had just moved back to Northern California for school. A 19-year-old, his name is Bryce Laspisa, had been studying at Rockland Sierra College and has been missing since last Friday. KCRA 3's Kevin Oliver, live force at Sierra College tonight. And Kevin, I understand you spoke with one of his former roommates just this afternoon. That's right, and his former roommate said he moved up here to Northern California to go to school here at Sierra College to get a fresh new start in a new community. And now many here and his friends and family down in Southern California are trying to figure out what happened to him on that trip home. He was studying graphic design. He um, would always bring sketches back to our dorm, and they were actually really good. He had some talent, a lot of talent, and it's too bad that something like this happened. Nick Cavina tried to call his old roommate Bryce Laspisa when he heard Laspisa vanished on his way down to his parents' house in Laguna Niguel. The 19-year-old's truck was found crashed on its side near Castaic Lake on Friday, 45 miles north of Los Angeles. But the Sierra College student was still missing. His girlfriend, Kim Sly, a Chico State student, met with him before he drove south. I have thought about every possible scenario of where he could be and what could have happened to him. Laspisa was in his second year at Sierra College. He roomed with Kavina last spring until Kavina says Laspisa was evicted from their dorm. He says their friendship didn't end on good terms. When I heard the story, it wasn't, I, by the way, I had knew him before. I had expected something like this, or not like this, but I, I expected nothing good could, would come from the path that he was on. After days of searching in and around the lake, today a bicyclist spotted a burning body three miles from the crash site. But investigators don't know if it's Lapisa or someone else. The body is so badly burned, investigators say you can't visibly tell whether it's male or female. Now, I contacted both Rockland Police, where the Sierra College is located, and Roseville Police, where Las Pisa was living. Neither said that they have been contacted by Southern California authorities regarding this investigation. And many students here are just praying that Las Pisa is found safe and sound. Here we have a video from CBS Chicago. Let's watch. Bryce Laspisa disappeared under bizarre circumstances last fall. To this day, it is still a mystery. Tonight, his mother is back in the Chicago area for the first time on her own. And she spoke to CBS 2's Brad Edwards in this original report. It's a best friend reunion in Terminal 3. I am Bryce Laspisa's mom. Best friends and their baggage. Some days are better than others. Her son Bryce missing for eight months. 15,000 now follow on Facebook. They had airplanes, they had helicopters, they had divers. And nothing. He called mom early one morning, said he'd be home. His vehicle soon after found here on its side. The back window busted out, his stuff inside. Soon after, a charred corpse was found nearby. No Bryce. A lot of emotions. Um, I seem to miss Bryce more being back here. For that, she has her best friend. We both live with uncertainty. A best friend with stage four cancer. This is my best friend that goes to sleep every night and doesn't know where her son is. 
is unbearable. Together in their fights of a lifetime, for one, every night, no sun and no word. I'll never give up hope, but it's really difficult. And just a couple weeks ago on Bryce's 20th birthday, there was a tip that he was living with the homeless in a mountainous region of L.A. County. Nothing came of it. An L.A. County Sheriff's detective today said it's an open missing person case. We're still searching, he said. They and many others. Here's a small clip from the show Disappeared, talking to Bryce's father. Let's check it out. A couple hours after hearing from Bryce's roommate, his mother Karen gets a call from Bryce, who's with his girlfriend Kim at her place in Chico, about 90 miles north of his apartment. Kim tells Karen that she thinks Bryce isn't acting at all like himself. She was very worried about him because he was still acting very strangely. And she had tried to take his keys away because she didn't want him to leave. Kim tells Bryce's mother that she doesn't think he should be driving. But Bryce insists to his parents that he's fine. He told both of us the same thing. He told me, I want my keys. I want to go home. I broke up with Kim. She won't give me the keys. And I said, Bryce, are you OK? Yes, I'm fine, Dad. I said, Bryce, I'm worried. I said, let me come up there tomorrow. Let me fly up there tomorrow. And he says, Mom, no, don't make an airline reservation until I talk to you, because I have a lot to talk to you about. Karen asks Kim to give Bryce his keys back. And Bryce leaves her place in Chico around 11.30 PM. Karen says that over the phone, Bryce sounded normal to her. I, as his mom, didn't get the sense that he was distraught over what he was doing. Bryce didn't seem heartbroken. I said, you just need to get back to your apartment and go to sleep and call me in the morning. And he said, OK. Bryce's parents both wonder what their son meant when he said, I have a lot to talk to you about. When they dropped him at school two weeks earlier, Bryce seemed carefree and happy. We don't know of anything that could be weighing on his mind, really, for, for just a couple of weeks up north. He had just spent the whole summer with us, and he literally had just finished two days of the school year. So I don't know what it could be that he had so much to talk to me about. I have absolutely no idea. Bryce calls his mother around 1 AM and she assumes he's back at his place. But the cell tower records show that he was nowhere near. He was an hour away from his apartment in basically in the middle of nowhere. Instead of going back to his apartment, Bryce is actually headed further south, past his college and towards the Tehachapi Mountains. Destination unknown. I believe he wasn't really sure what he was gonna do. He's very conflicted. He knows he wants, he needs to go home. I believe he wanted to go home, but something happened. Something happened that made him hesitate a lot. Let's hope and pray that one day Bryce's family can find him and find out what happened to him. He's been missing since 2013. If you know Bryce, if you were around him the night he vanished and knew what his plans were or where he may have been heading, let the authorities know. Small details can close cases.